Hey everyone, Sean here. I thought I'd just give you a quick tour, tour of my boat. I haven't done that yet. I've been doing some work on it over the year since I bought it in the spring. Thought I'd show you guys some of the changes. Check it out. Alright, this is a 1990 Bass Tracker. Give you the ones over here real quick. 17 foot. It's a Bass Tracker Pro 17. Outfitted with 12 Driftmaster rod holders. These on the back are the Big Fish T-Bar systems. These are awesome. Love these a bunch. And uh, these here are the new uh, trollers. The Duo trollers. They rock, rock. I mean, look how strong that is. I don't even see that. I mean, the whole boat moves before those things move. Stainless steel. Very, very nice. I like those a bunch. Under the seats. Just under the seats. <laughs> now, originally, this boat I think I had all wood framing, but uh, uh, I think the original owner replaced everything with aluminum, so it's a lot lighter than it originally was. Live well. Not very big for the kind of fish I prefer to catch, but works good for holding stuff. Underneath the engine, I got my little oar there. Nice. And in the engine, oops, underneath here, get that net out of the way. Got my trolling motor battery and the starting battery. And I've got one of the two six gallon tanks installed. I prefer to leave the other out of there so I've got more room for storing stuff. That's rope for the anchor that I use for lakes. And I put it where the old oil tank used to be. This is a uh, oil injected 40 horse but as a lot of you may know or so I've been told that the oil injected models of Johnson yesteryear the uh, malfunctioned quite a bit so the previous owner had a mechanic take the oil injection off and now I run mixed fuel in it runs real real good another one of the Driftmaster rod holders on this side <clears throat> That's my uh, very high-tech spare two gallons to get out of trouble. In the build, I've got an automatic thousand gallon per hour uh, f uh, bilge pump with a, uh, they say it's a laser float. I'm not really sure what that means. I think it's an infrared switch on it. You can test it, you can put your fingers over it. And it goes off. That way you know if water gets up in there, it'll get out of there as quickly as possible. And then the live well pump itself, that came with the boat, not really sure much about it. But I redid all these batteries. The batteries were just on cradles and, uh, and all exposed wiring, and, and it just seemed like a pretty bad deal to me, so I redid all this wiring here. I don't know if you can see right there. I'll come around to the other side. I did this really cool thing since I enclosed the batteries. Now I can't get to them to charge them if I need to. So I ran wire, same as on my battery charger, and uh, ran wire from each battery. The green one corresponds to that green marker there. And the yellow one corresponds to the yellow marker there. And then I, uh, I cut the cord on my, uh, on my charger and uh, installed the opposite plug on the charger. And now all I got to do is plug in right here and it's in the same corner uh, as the uh, corner I can reach from the garage. So I don't have to jump over the boat to get to the other side of the 
uh, boat to get to the battery when I have to charge it. So green goes to to the starter battery. Green means go. I installed these rod holders. And these uh, these are uh, Abu Garcia 6600 Brutes. I don't know a whole lot about them. I, I bought them and uh, they were used. But uh, I like them. They work real well. The, the color goes extremely well with my Team Fat Boys Black Horse Custom Rods. These are seven foot fast action. And they've got stainless steel eyes. And the rods are blank, the blanks are black, and then all the yellow and all the other colors all wrapped on there. And Black Horse Custom Rods did a wonderful job on those. They've got glow in the dark thread wrapped around the tips. And uh, if you hit them with a flashlight at night, they grow they glow super, super bright. Thank you very, very, very much, Black Horse Custom Rods. Those rock, rock. I love those things. And of course, there's my handy little knife. And over here, got a uh, hundred foot of a big fat anchor rope. Not because you need that big fat rope, but it's easier on the hands when you're pulling in that bad boy. That's 20 pounds of mean son of a gun anchor right there. Dave over at uh, uh, Dave over at uh, bo uh, Bottom Dwellers uh, gave me some hints on how to build one, so I welded me up some steel. And I'm telling you what, boys, that anchor right there may be a pain in the butt to pull in the boat, but you drop it down, you don't need any slack in the anchor line at all. You will not move an inch after you drop that thing down. And then the guy at the front of the boat will be bitching the whole time he's pulling it up. But you ain't moving with that thing. That thing rocks. And I welded, I saw this on the internet, I welded the chain down here at the bottom. Like that. Not the world's best weld, but hey, it's there. And then, uh, then I've got the chain tied to the top with a great big old zip tie and I keep some spares in the boat so if it ever gets stuck you can just yank it with the boat and it should come unsnapped haven't had it have happen yet but it should come unsnapped and then we can pull it out from the back now it's got a 37 pound motor guide trolling motor it did not work when I got it it only had one speed the top here spun freely I took it all apart, replaced all the wiring. All five speeds works. Works works really, really great. I want to show you guys this here. This wire here was all burned up, and to get the proper sized wire was going to be really expensive. So this is braided uh, 10 3, I'm sorry, braided 10 2 Romex. I pulled the solid copper, uh, the solid copper ground out of it. And then the white and the black were braided, and I bought this here plug and uh, installed it, and it works great. It's cool as a cucumber now. The old one was was just too small, and it got real hot and then burned up all the wires. Um, carpet's really coming off of this boat. But uh, what do I need carpet for? I'm going to put cat, catfish guts all over it anyway. And uh, just put the strap to keep it strapped down. I've got uh, some boat buckles right here and here for rods on top and I've got a boat buckle there and there for rods to go in these holes. I had to drill those myself. This was a pretty well base model I think uh, or you know when the guy changed out all the decks in the boat to uh, aluminum decks he didn't put any holes back in there, but I think that it stock, it was a pretty basic boat because there were no holes there anyway, and, and it was that hole underneath there was just, it's just packed full of foam. I had to take a pipe to get that foam out. And this is just a jug to hold the anchor rope line in case we need to release from the anchor real, real fast. I'll show you this here. Black stickers on my boat. We've got the Driftmaster's rod holder sticker. I uh, 
I really like those Driftmaster rod holders. They rock. And then uh, bottom dwellers. Best online shop for catfish stuff I ever saw. Really, really, really like them. One more time for the boys. Bottom dwellers, bottom dwellers, bottom dwellers. Driftmaster. Anyway, so bang, it's banged up a little bit on the front. And, you know, it's got a little uh, water staining on the side from years of use, but uh, works real good in the water anyway. Step over the hitch here. More rod holders, more stickers. Nice. Bottom dwellers. Another look at that badass anchor I know all of you guys are jealous about. If Batman had an anchor, that would be the one. And then uh, this nice little cubby here. Not really a cubby. But a place to put a cooler anyway. Imagine there's an antenna there. Just imagine. Rod holder. We got a marine radio that the previous owner hooked up incorrectly, so it drained the battery every turn time you turn the key off, so it's completely unhooked. Basic simple fish finder, a gift for my in-laws. I love it, love it, love it. Another uh, under the seat view of well, just a full under the seat. Keys and uh Good place for a cutting board. Gets used really, really regularly. Of course, you're a fire extinguisher. Hope to never, never need that. And these holes are really interesting in the deck. Uh, the previous owner had put uh, rod holders flush in the deck. And you know what that turned the deck into? A great big freaking tripping hazard. Hated it. And worst of all... In here, I don't know if you can see, no, because I filled it full of foam already. Uh, right down in here, there's a brace that comes straight across here. So any of you guys thinking about drilling right into your deck, there's a brace that comes straight across here. And it's about that wide, and it's a really important one, and the guy drilled straight through it. Now, luckily, that entire, this whole area in here is completely full of flotation foam. Now, I did about the... Uh, I put some, I poured some new flotation foam in here and filled up that hole, filled up that hole, and then did my uh, really pretty job of spray painting it. So uh, when you know when I get to the point where I replace the carpet, that'll all get, that'll all disappear. Here's where the uh, navigation light in the rear goes. That is a really loose socket, though. I don't know if you guys have the same issues with yours, but this whole part of the deck, and it's probably because it's been replaced with aluminum, but this bit of aluminum here has, has gotten real soft. But uh, I'm going to have to shore that up. Um, to any of you guys out there that are going to be putting Driftmaster rod holders on the side of your Bassmaster, or Bass Tracker, rather, um, I don't know if you can see this, but the gunnel has a very slight tilt so if you're going to put Driftmaster rod holders on the gunnel like I have, make sure you use the troller variety because they've got a nice they've got a nice angle up. It helps to combat that. Works really good on this boat. And then uh back here, just the standard stuff. Fish finder or uh the transducers and speedometer doohickey and whatnot. And the uh the lovely Johnson or that lovely tracker black paint job that they painted over the original white paint I can only assume because all the Johnsons that I've seen the 40 horses I've seen from 1990 are all white so I assume that that uh, tracker got a white motor in and painted it black and that paint man you got to be careful I hit it with the the hose from the car wash and whoosh there went the black paint and uh, I peeled this, the, it used to be a Missouri boat, I peeled the Missouri sticker off and all the black paint came off and it's perfect white paint under it. I wish I could peel all this black paint off, but uh, I don't think I've got a chance at that. Uh, 
Another one for the boys. Now, guys, I really like this boat. I'm telling you, we can. We it glides across the water. It pops right out of the water as soon as you hit the throttle. In fact, I don't even need to do, go wide open throttle. Just a third throttle, and it pops out of the water. Cruises along about 30 miles an hour with just me in it. Really, really like this boat. Get a good old uh, flag in there, and oh. Something, something for the Brotherhood. Local four, thank you very much. Under here, one last thing. A little bit of a compartment under the deck. Goes, it's it's about nine feet long. It's a, it really does hold quite a bit of stuff. But of course, I shove everything right there at the end. But anyway. For any of you guys who are just trying to check them out online like I was and I couldn't find a, a really decent video just kind of what I was getting in getting into here's here's what it looks like I tell you what guys I mean this boat really does it comes out of the water good but uh, you can also walk right up to any one of the four corners just step right up to the edge it doesn't flip over it's very very stable for a 17 foot it's extremely well put together we're gonna take it out on the Mississippi tomorrow and uh, and we haven't had one small problem, not even a, a little problem that was boat related anyway on the Mississippi. This is a real good boat. So if you're looking for one, uh, I, you know, it's very common. I see them out all the time. This is a very good boat to get. You can't go wrong. All right. Take it easy, guys. Thanks.